Hey guys, thanks for following along. Usually I'm building aircraft. This time we're building a wild pool. It sits on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. A floor moves up and down in the pool and literally can come out of the water to turn it into a dance floor or just a couple feet deep if I got little kids in the pool. We have windows that see through into the pool. We got some crazy engineering with concrete that spans clear out over the backyard sitting on a single column. The pool actually sits over a garage. So we're gonna show you how we engineer so cars can drive under the pool. There's a lot of crazy things we got to do. Big craning, big rebar, big construction, and a ton of engineering. This is in Utah. It's gonna be able to freeze. And so I need this system to auto winterize. So I'm gonna show you some big underground water vaults that drain all the pipes every time a pump turns off, either from me or from a power outage, so that this pool can be run 365 days a year. We're doing radiant floor heating, all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Follow along, I hope you like this. You know, I love engineering. I hope you like this. As soon as we get this house done, we're gonna get back to building a few airplanes. I'm actually building airplanes while building the house. So I hope you follow along all of it. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay, right here we've got SolidWorks, this cross section, basically we've split visually in half the pool. So you can zoom in and I'll show you all the assemblies right here. Down here on the bottom is an assembly that get poured in concrete. You can even see the pulleys are kind of cut in half where you can look into it and see how the cables all change directions, four different directions to grab four points of the platform. Here's probably one of the easier views to understand. Right here you can see the shallow end of the pool is over here. There'll be a swim platform here, a hot tub built in here. The pool comes down this direction then drops off to the deep end. There you can see the pulley assemblies in the bottom. They pass over here all together, move up this watertight column out here to above the water line. At this point, this is where they turn around, come back down outside of the water line into the lid of the basement concrete rooms turn sideways and all the motor and all the controls will be over at this end. If I zoom in on the plate that pulls on the cables, you can see I've cross-sectioned it as well, I've kind of split the cable in half. It's basically a plate that has one connection point and when you pull on it, this arm is so long that it forces them to square up and keep all the cables in line and parallel each other. So they all pull perfectly even. Now, I actually have a set of stainless steel turnbuckles on each one of those four points. So when I get everything tight, I can twist the turnbuckles, level off the floating platform and get it perfect and then drag it up and down and they'll always stay together. Hey guys, I'm gonna interrupt this video real quick to remind you, go check out mikepady.com. We got lots of cool gear, shirts, hats, if you buy anything, you get automatically entered to win all kinds of things like Garmin watches, giveaways. There's so much that we're giving away. It ends real soon. Jump on, buy some gear. It helps promote aviation and helps me and you get people flying where we pay for the first flight. And now we're even paying for lessons and we want to get people to the finish line. So the Payday First Flight Program, or I guess we should call it Payday Flight Program, as we're now paying for more than the first flight, is working so well. Check out the gear, go buy something, promote aviation. We love you guys. Back to work. Getting closer and closer to installing the lift system that raises and lowers the floor of this pool. I want to talk a little bit about the engineering I thought through to make that happen. 
One of the ideas I had was to do what's done on some of the big Las Vegas pool floors that manipulate around. They use hydraulics and different methods. There's some complications that arise when you go with hydraulics. There's all kinds of chemical risks if your pH starts to get out of balance. If your pH goes acidic, you start to dissolve and eat things. And so if there was a chance I left town and my pool went acidic, I could completely destroy seals, mess things up, even if I'm using the highest quality products, stainless steel, everything else. So I wanna make sure I make something that I'm not babysitting. The other problem with hydraulics, because we can work through that by being more cautious, setting up automations, redundancy, more things to babysit. But let's say we work through all that and we can make it work, which we can, it's been done. We have another problem. As soon as I use hydraulic rams, they're down at the bottom of the pool and I need a certain amount of ram for the hydraulic to suck into. And whatever that amount is, I lose in depth of the pool because the rams are gonna come down and bottom out at whatever was going up. Well, then I could try and get a little more room, meaning I could lose half my depth of my pool just in the ram. So I could multi-ram tier it. Now the cost goes absolutely through the roof. There's that many more seals, there's that many more risks, and you can start squatting your hydraulic system smaller, and then you're tiering the rams that go up, but you still lose a significant part of the pool. So I thought, how do I keep this extremely simple? So I started looking into cabling systems. How could I pull it up, pull it down, move it back and forth? And as I designed it with cables, I went, you know what, this is actually really quite easy with cables. However, there is some maintenance with the tension of the up pole and the down pole and keeping them both tight so they're not loose. And then the other issue is you're gonna see the cable in the pool, which I hate that idea. A cable that pulls the platform up and re reverse pulls it back down, you're gonna see those cables coming up. So I thought, you know what, there's a simpler way to this. And that was to do a one directional cable system and run it on a worm drive that's located in my basement. And the purpose of the worm drive is if a power failed, the worm drive can stop. You don't need an electrical or mechanical brake on the system to hold the platform still. It will just stay wherever it is. So if I use a worm drive to drive a cable, but I only pull one direction, which is down, the cables can stay invisible. And so it was simple. I'm gonna make a floating platform out of composites and make it extremely thick. And then it's easy calculations. I can calculate the offset of water I displace, calculate the amount of pounds that is of flotation I'll get, and quickly figure out how much force it's gonna to take to drag it down, what it's gonna come up out of the water and how far out of the water I can raise my platform in buoyancy to handle whether I want 10 people on it or 50 people for a party or tables and chairs and a gathering. And that got really easy. And so I calculated the thickness of the platform, the water it offsets, then minus the weight of the platform itself because its own weight is gonna sink it and then you get the delta of how much weight you could put on it without it sinking and people's shoes getting wet. Once I calculated the mass of people that could go on the platform, I decided how high out of the water I want it to sit. And now I have to make sure that the motors and cables are sized so that if nobody's on the platform and I don't have the assisted weight to pull it down, what is the delta from, let's call it max gross weight that I want on it without people getting wet? And if no one's on it, what force load is it gonna to take to pull it to the bottom of the pool? And it's actually quite simple. The mechanics of it got easy. It does use four very large cables, pulleys, bushings, things that are super easy to replace. If I ever have to replace a bushing on a pulley, I can unpin it, slide it out, put a new one in, and at the speed this moves, which is extremely slow, the safer, the slower it goes, there's just gonna be almost no wear on that platform. So I highly doubt I'll ever replace a pulley or a component, but I can get to them. One of the other things I need to do in this platform, this water level is about right here where I'm standing. As this platform comes up from the deep end, quite frankly, I'm gonna set a preset switch that I can tell the platform to go to this perfect level. 
because that's where I'm gonna leave the platform 99% of the time. If I'm not in it, this floating floor is gonna be flush with this floor and the pool becomes a sport pool. And it's just this depth all the way across. However, if I raise this up and out of the water to bring it up and make that upper deck by the fire pit, all come across so you can kind of step between it, put up tables and chairs, there would be an opening right here where someone could get under it. And that just freaks me out. So I'm just gonna design a simple system as the platform comes up off the floor, it opens up and blocks the access so no one can get under it. Now for service, no big deal. I'll bring it up. The grates that keep the platform from moving too fast can be removed. I can put on scuba gear, go down in there safely, come back up but there really shouldn't be much service on this at all. Cables and pulleys, straightforward. Now there's other calculations we had to do. The platform, as it moves up and down, the water always stays in the pool. I'm just migrating the floor through it. So I calculate the size of the opening. So there'll be several openings in the floor, like installed grates that the water passes through. And then it's kind of fun to play with things like what happens if cables broke? I don't want this platform to just shoot up out of the pool and knock people up in the air. First of all, they're four independent cables, so it'd probably just tip sideways, get a little out of balance if a cable broke. But let's say worst case scenario, it unhooked. You can calculate the flow rate, the max volumetric flow that water can travel through a hole. And this disc that covers this entire thing is going to act like the inside of a shock of a car. It can only displace liquid so fast and the fluid transfers through the hole. If you want the platform to move faster or pop right out of the water, you do large holes. If you do small holes, then the platform can only move so fast through the water. So I'm gonna set it up so the cables drive the speed and the diameter for the water flow through the platform is set up so that if something unhooked, it's not gonna go much faster than the cable would all on its own. So those are some of the safety features. I'm super excited about it. The platform, oh my gosh, it's gonna be an interesting chore. I can't build it in a shop. I can't put it in my hangar. I can't get it down the road. It's over 25 foot in diameter. Wide load permits aren't even gonna go that far. And if I try and stand it up high, I can't fit under an overpass. I can't lay it down, I'd be almost three lanes wide. I don't want it in pieces because I don't want flex in the middle. So I think we'll probably build a temporary floor that spans this entire pool, build it on the pool above the water area, crane it off, move the floor, drop it in the water, float it into place and hook it up. So we have a lot of fun stuff to do. I hope that all makes sense. I'm really excited about it. Um, I still need to get the components mounted to the bottom, but those of you who asked how we were gonna make the platform move, it's quite simple. It's gonna float we're gonna pull it down. That's about as easy as I can make it with as few parts as possible. Anyway, you guys know the drill. I have a lot to do. That's work. All right, guys, we're part way through the project. We've got several of the components done. I'll dive into more about what these are for, how they align later. But I do want to kind of give you a quick look at it. You can see all these weld points. And if you pay attention, they're all key weighed in. So every single part goes together exactly like a Lego set. None of these parts do we have to measure or align. They have um, slots and keyways like these parts do. So you just kind of snap it together like a Lego set and weld it and everything will be within a few thousandths of an inch accuracy. That same with these components, I'll describe that later, what these are all for. But all these welds are keyways that we drew up in SolidWorks. So when I designed this, I wanted everything to just snap together. So when I brought it over and let someone else weld it, um, they could just click it together, burn it out, and uh, I could build airplanes. So these parts are all done, ready to go. This now will become the center assembly of the pool where all the cables will come from one direction, four cables split four ways to these 
And I just wanted to kind of quickly show you this. Every one of these components have different tabs. They're different sizes, so you can't rotate them the wrong way. It will only assemble one direction. So SolidWorks made it easy. And even right down to the shafts, you can see one large size, a smaller size, a smaller size, and a pin set. That's so that when I align this plate, this plate, and this plate, which are all completely different, it can only go together one way and everything will align for all the cables to set up. Done. All right, guys, I've assembled this in a way to try and make this easier to explain how this all works. So imagine this component is sitting in the middle of the swimming pool, four corners outward from it, all perpendicular to each other is pulleys that go up to a floating platform. We're gonna pull down with cables. This gets concreted in the bottom of the pool to this level. So I'm adding eight more inches of concrete. These do as well. They have holes through the middle, so rebar will pass through, bolted to the two foot thick footing that's already there, then rebarred and concreted to there. So all you can see in the bottom of the pool is this, but it will be hidden by the floating platform. This is the direction the cables go. You have a pulley sitting on this shaft, this shaft, this shaft, and this shaft. You have four cables. One comes here. Around that pulley, it's got plates on the sides that won't allow that cable to jump off. They come around this pulley and lead out into here, up to the platform. Another cable comes this way, around that pulley, out to that one. This one comes over here, makes a soft turn. It's got a guide plate underneath here and here, so it can't come off of this pulley when installed. And that cable goes out to this point. The fourth cable comes through here, comes out along its guides to this point. Now you have these slid out just over 12 to 13 feet outward. And all the cables combine here through the wall of the pool, several water stops up the side. Water is following that tube all the way up to water line. Above that water line comes this plate. This is two feet above the water line. It'll be hidden under the pavers of the deck, but it can be removed with this cap and you could pull out and replace any pulleys through that. Those are eight pulleys. They literally just take the cables out of the water area line, above water line, over two pulleys each, back down and into the basement. So we make a full loop with this system. I hope that makes sense. We've got a lot of work done. Kelly Maurer holding my camera right there, freaking stud. <laughs> put this together in his shop. We designed it with me and a buddy of mine, uh, Brigham Hopkins, I did the design. He helped me out. I've been so busy on several different airplanes. Um, I was able to get a couple other guys to dive in and kind of take up some of the workload that I might be carrying. Um, so it was great. This was a pencil drawing laying in bed at night. And then I did the engineering calcs. We moved it to a computer, laser cut it, brought it here. Kelly took over the welding with his great guys in his shop. Now we need to put it in a pool and hope it works. Enough talking, you guys know the drill. <laughs> Back to work. Okay guys, so right now you can see this long set of four tubes being slid down this square tube. This is so that when I'm feeding the cables down the long run, 24 feet deep into the pool, it's almost 27 because it comes out of the water. While I'm feeding the cables down, they can't cross and tangle up. So I've got a series of just guides. Now when the cables pull tight, they actually won't even touch the sides of those tubes. So, just little details make the assembly and any service super simple. So thank you for following along. I hope you guys like this video. And I think I have six motors here in crates for various aircraft projects. So real soon, I'm gonna get you guys caught up. Some I'll get to tell you about.
Some I'll have to wait till later. But I'm going to do a video about all the aircraft I've been building on, what's coming next, what has to say secret, and what I can announce. Because I've been building planes and this crazy house build with this swimming pool, and I just did my first flight on one of them. I can't wait to show you that. I have to hold back for a little longer. More videos to come. Back to work.